High-speed chase ends in arrest in two rivers. Blood still needed in Sheboygan County. Victims of Thursday's shooting identified. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Tuesday, October 8th, 2019. Two Rivers Police took one man into custody after being led on a chase that reached speeds of up to 100 miles per hour. It began Sunday morning when police responded to reports of a suspicious vehicle, and upon locating the vehicle, discovered the subject had outstanding warrants and criminal charges. That's when the subject fled, leading officers through the cities of Two Rivers and Manitowoc and into Manitowoc County. The chase ended when the vehicle crashed and the suspect was arrested without injuries, but now with additional charges. The American Red Cross is urging you to donate blood. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and the Red Cross says it is a perfect opportunity to help those who rely on transfusions to survive their fight against cancer and other illnesses. Two blood drives will take place in Sheboygan County this week at Faith Reform Church in Cedar Grove today from 1230 to 530 and the Sheboygan Trades and Labor Hall on Wisconsin Avenue from 10 until 3 on Friday. The deceased victim of Thursday's shooting incident in Pine Grove Cemetery in Wausau has been identified. The Wausau Daily Herald reports the cemetery's general manager, Patricia, or Patty Grimm, died in the incident at the age of 52. According to an obituary published by Brainerd Funeral Home and Cremation Center, Grimm was a ray of light to all she met. She was a champion for her family, her community, and her place of employment, the Pine, Cemet the Pine Grove Cemetery. She was also said to walk through the entire park daily, working to keep it presentable and even taking care of the animals that the, called the park home. In addition to working for the cemetery, she was also a member of the Wausau Historic Preservation Commission. A celebration of life for Grimm will be held today at St. Anne Parish in Wausau at 11 o'clock a.m. Former cemetery employee Henry West is facing a potential charge of first-degree intentional homicide in the incident, and he made an initial court appearance on Friday and remains jailed in $1 million cash bond, but further court action against him has not been scheduled. Police say official charges remain at the discretion of the Marathon County District Attorney's Office. The names of the two other victims were also released by Wausau Police on Monday. Injured were 60-year-old William Booz and 70-year-old Rosemelia Short. Booz was also an employee of the cemetery, and according to the police, he remains in critical condition. Short was treated for injuries and was released from the hospital over the weekend. Police say she is related to another employee of the cemetery. The Department of Natural Resources has released the first round of tests for PFAS in state waterways. DNR Environmental Management Division Administrator Darcy Foss says testing was done on six creeks and rivers. Silver Creek in Monroe County also had relatively high concentrations of PFOS, one of the most widely used and studied PFAS chemicals. Lower levels of contamination were found in the Mississippi between the Twin Cities and La Crosse, the Wisconsin River between Rhinelander and Nakusa, and the Menominee near Marionette. We do not recommend ingesting this water, Foss says, and if your pets come in contact with it, we recommend washing it off of them with clean water. PFAS are the residues of many plastic products. 
A special task force will improve data protection laws in Wisconsin. Governor Tony Evers is putting together the group to recommend data protection law changes and updates. State Consumer Protection Administrator Laura Sutherland says the task force will be trying to improve laws that haven't been touched in over a decade. What Wisconsin is doing, what it's not doing, what's happening in and around the county and in and around the world, quite frankly. And looking at many ways in which we may or may not be able to modernize our current regularity framework. Sutherland says cyber thieves have become more sophisticated since the laws were written. We see data breaches regularly now, unfortunately, and it is part of the world that we live in now. The task force will be holding meetings with officials and the public over the next year and then present a full or present a full framework of what can be done to improve protections in the governor and the legislature next summer. And finally, the Department of Natural Resources is continuing its efforts to expanding chronic wasting disease testing. DNR Wildlife Health Coordinator Aaron Larson says it, this is the second year that deer are being sampled statewide. Last year we did a lot of testing and sampling in the west central part of Wisconsin, and this year we are focusing on the northern part of Wisconsin as well. If you wish to bring in your deer head to a sampling site, be sure to include enough of the neck for a proper sample. We need about a hand width of the neck to be able to get to the samples that we need. The lymph nodes are in that part of the deer, Larson said. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Thursday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.